and welcome to another episode of Down to Disney, a monthly series where I pick a Disney animated movie and talk about its history and its impact on pop culture today. This month's movie is Treasure Planet, released in 2002, one of the movies you guys have been begging me to talk about. Treasure Planet is one of Disney's most notoriously underrated movies. It was really good and a lot of good came of it, but people don't really talk about it that much, which is a shame. Treasure Planet is actually Disney's third Treasure Island movie. First they did Treasure Island in 1950, then a Muppet Treasure Island with the Jim Henson Company in 1996, and then finally Treasure Planet in 2002. Treasure Planet was done by John Musker and Ron Clements, a famous Disney animation duo who worked on movies like Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Hercules, Great Mouse Detective, all of our favorites. What's really interesting is that Musker and Clements wanted to do Treasure Island in space, for so long. They first pitched the idea in 1985 when they were working on The Black Cauldron, but then they were assigned to The Great Mouse Detective in 1986. They decided to pitch it again in 1989 after working on The Little Mermaid, but they were then assigned to direct Aladdin. After Aladdin, the studio wanted them to also direct Hercules, and they agreed to do so on the condition that after finishing Hercules, they could start on Treasure Planet, and they did. So it was obviously a passion project for Musker and Clements. They put so much time and energy into the movie, which ended up making it pretty expensive. What Treasure Planet is still famous for today is its use of CGI animation mixed with hand-drawn traditional animation. Also, its groundbreaking use of Disney's deep canvas effect. Deep canvas involves painting 3D objects in a computer using paint strokes that adhere to different points in space. And if you're anything like me, you kind of have no idea what that means. But it is essentially what it sounds like, creating a deep environment. And this was used in the movie Tarzan before Treasure Planet, but only for about 10 minutes of the film. It's used in the scene when Tarzan is surfing on tree branches, and that's kind of the only time it's used in the movie Tarzan. But in Treasure Planet, it's used the whole movie. What they did differently for Treasure Planet was they created virtual sets, which were 3D animated sets and environments that the 2D characters walked around in. So what's crazy is that you have human characters that are hand-drawn, CGI characters like Ben and Long John Silver's mechanical arm, and then you have deep canvas animation happening with the ship and the space surfing scene, and sometimes all three of these techniques are used at once and that was something that had never been seen in an animated movie before. So in addition to Disney having done this story a few times before, it's important to note just that this wasn't an original story. Treasure Island was a book by Robert Louis Stevenson and has been used in film and animation for years and years and years. It's a very famous story, but this was the first time it had a twist to it, the sci-fi twist. Also, interesting to note that the ship in Treasure Planet is called the RLS Legacy, RLS, standing for Robert Louis Stevenson. The animation team made a huge effort to make Treasure Planet a movie that would be timeless. Even though it was supposed to theoretically take place in the future, I say theoretically because we don't really know when it takes place. Parts of it look really old, parts of it look really new. So what they did is they went with a 70-30 ratio. 70% of the look rooted in the past and 30% looking futuristic. So for example, you look at the ship and it looks really old timey, but upon closer examination, you see blasters and wings and super sci-fi stuff added on. Jim Hawkins and his family are actually the only humans in the movie. Everyone else are either aliens or cyborgs or both. And this posed a really fun challenge for animators. Very famous Disney animator Glenn Keane was asked to work on the human portions of Long John Silver, or I guess just John Silver in this version of the movie. Glenn Keane was quoted as saying that he based the general character design off of a football coach that he had in school. But John Silver also bears a notable resemblance to Wallace Beery, who played Long John Silver in the 1934 version of Treasure Island. So while Glenn Keane animated one part of John Silver, it was Eric Daniels, a very experienced CGI animator, who did the robotic parts of him. His arm, his leg, his eyeball, and Eric Daniels was also an integral part of perfecting Deep Canvas. So it took two pro animators to work on John Silver, because he was that complex. Jim Hawkins is the cutest. One of the most likable, adorable, root for him all the way characters that Disney has done of late. It's easy to forget that he was actually voiced by now A-list celebrity Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and now it totally makes sense why I love Jim Hawkins, because he's got Jogo Lev's awesome voice, and I didn't really remember that until recently. Joseph Gordon, love it! This film also has some really incredible but often overlooked sidekicks. There's Morph, first of all, who's just the cutest thing in the world, and animators actually used lava lamps 
to draw inspiration for Morph's design. Bet you could have guessed that. And then there's Ben, who is voiced by famous comedian Martin Short. Ben wasn't originally supposed to be such a huge part of the story, but Martin Short recorded so much amazing voice acting for him that the animators decided to just play into more of his recordings because they were so good they didn't want to lose them. The dynamic between John Silver and Jim Hawkins is really fascinating and great to watch. Jim enters the story as a kind of incomplete character because he lacks a relationship with a, with a father figure and he is looking for that. John Silver gives him that, while also being a villain. And that's just crazy. You never fully trust him. Even when you like him, you don't trust him fully. So here's the sad news. Treasure Planet, arguably the biggest box office flop for Disney ever. They spent 180 million on Treasure Planet and they made back 101 million. Not great. And this is despite the fact that it was the first movie to be released in IMAX and regular theaters at the same time. We take that for granted now, but this was the first one. It did, however, get nominated for Best Animated Picture at the Oscars that year, so it's not a total failure, but it really is regarded as kind of the most recent huge flop for the Disney company. And yet here we are with all of you leaving me comments begging me to do a Treasure Planet episode of Down to Disney. I love Treasure Planet, we all do. It's a super underrated Disney movie with a lot of memorable characters, amazing animation that kind of changed the game for CGI. And it's just really good. Like people need to watch it. If you haven't watched Treasure Planet, you should check it out. I think it's still on Netflix. So you have no excuse. As always, continue to leave comments down below letting me know what movie you would like to see me do next on Down to Disney. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like Disney videos like these because it's basically all I do. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you guys very soon for another episode of Down to Disney. Bye!